it's story time. On the count of three, let's say the story bag poem and see what's inside. One, two, three. Story bag, story bag, what have you to say? Story bag, story bag, what's in you today? We have a reed. This is an ancient Greek myth called the Barber's Secret. Story ears open, story mouths quiet, story buckles buckle, and let us begin. Once upon a time, long ago, a young barber and his wife and mother moved to a village at the foot of the king's palace. The barber opened up his shop and right away business was booming. Everyone needed a haircut. Happy day, said the barber. This is a wonderful place for us to stay. A few weeks later, two guards from the king's palace entered the barber shop and said, Barber, the king wants a haircut right now. The barber was thrilled. Happy, happy day. Not only do I have a wonderful business, but I have the honor of being the barber to the king. Everyone in the barber shop looked sad. One of his customers said, Barber, haven't you ever wondered why you were the only barber in town? We've had many other barbers before you, but every barber that goes up to give the king a haircut is never seen from again. Oh dear, said the barber. Guards, please tell the king I won't be able to make it. But the guards grabbed the barber by the arm and took him up to the palace, threw him in a room, and locked the door behind him. The barber was terrified, but he was very smart, and he said to himself, if I want to keep my head on my shoulders, I had better keep my wits about me. He took a deep breath to steady his nerves, and when the king opened the door, the barber jumped to his feet, with his knees trembling ever so slightly, bowed, and asked, Your Majesty, how may I be of service? I would like a haircut, said the king. He lifted the crown off of his head, and instead of human ears, the king had two long, hairy donkey ears. The barber was shocked. He wanted to scream and run away, but he also wanted to keep his head on his shoulders. So he bowed and asked, would you like a trim or perhaps a buzz cut, your majesty? Just a trim will do, said the king. The barber gave him a fine haircut. When he was finished, the king said, Nice job, barber. I like you, and I don't want to kill you. So I will let you live as long as you promise never to tell another living soul about my donkey ears. If you do, you won't have a head left on your shoulders. The barber gave the king his word that he wouldn't tell another living soul. And the barber was allowed to leave the palace. Everyone in the village was surprised to see the barber return. The villagers asked, what happened with the king? But the barber said not a word. That evening when he saw his wife and mother, they said, we were so worried. What happened with the king? But the barber kept his promise and did not say a word to another living soul. It was very difficult to keep such a big secret all to himself. The barber wanted to share the burden with someone, but he couldn't. Pretty soon, that secret worried and bothered him so much that the secret started to swell up in the barber. First, his arms got big and fat and puffy. Then his legs swelled up like two tree trunks. Then his belly got so big, he felt like a balloon about ready to burst. When the barber couldn't take it anymore, he got up in the middle of the night, waddled out of the village to a lake. And there at the edge of the lake, where the reeds and grass grew, the barber dug a deep hole. 
He bent down and whispered into the hole, Our king has donkey ears. Our king has big, hairy ears like a donkey. He filled up the hole with dirt. He covered it with dry leaves and grass so no one would know that he had buried it there. And the barber stood up. His pants fell down because he was back to his normal weight. He kicked up his heels and went home and felt wonderful. And all was well with the barber for about a week. Then a wandering shepherd brought his sheep to that very lake where the barber had buried his secret. And while the sheep were drinking, the shepherd sat down in the very spot where the barber had buried his secret. And as a gentle breeze blew, the shepherd heard the reeds singing in the wind. Our king has donkey ears. Our king has big hairy ears like a donkey. Wow, said the shepherd. I've never heard reeds that can sing words before. I have to show everyone. The shepherd cut off one of the reeds and ran to the village and said, Villagers, listen to this. He put the reed to his lips and blew, and the reed sang, Our king has donkey ears. Our king has big, hairy ears like a donkey. Pretty soon, everyone in the village was singing that song. Finally, the king heard. And he was furious. He called for the barber and said, Barber, you told. And the barber said, No, Your Majesty, I kept my promise. I didn't tell a single soul. I kept my word. But the king didn't believe him. And he threw him into jail and scheduled his execution for the very next day. While the barber was in jail, he heard about the shepherd and the reed. And the next morning, at his execution, the barber said, Your Majesty, I have one last dying request. I would like you to blow on the reed that the shepherd brought to our village yesterday. The king called for the shepherd and asked for the reed. The king put the reed to his lips and blew, and the reed sang, Our king has donkey ears. Our king has big, hairy ears like a donkey. The king was furious. He broke the reed in two, took off his crown, and threw it to the ground. Everyone saw his donkey ears. You see, your majesty, said the barber, I kept my promise. I didn't tell a single soul, but it was too big of a secret for me to keep, so I told it to the ground. It was too big of a secret for the ground to keep, so it whispered it to the reeds. And it was too big of a secret for the reeds to keep, so they sang it to the wind. The king realized that the barber was telling the truth, and he had kept his word not to tell a single soul. The king pardoned the barber, and the king felt relieved that he didn't have to keep the secret anymore himself. So from then on, the king never wore his crown again, except on very special occasions. Then, every six weeks or so, he called the barber up to the palace for a haircut. And there be my story, bit bitter or sweet. Take what you like, but leave enough for me to eat. <laughs>